Hi, I'm Jane Martin and I want to make this video because as lockdown goes on and on and more and more people are, are affected by this dreaded COVID-19 strain of coronavirus, it worries me that if the virus doesn't kill us, then we're all going to kill each other. So I thought I'd share with you a bit of what I've learned over the last few years about how our brains work and what will be going on in our heads at an unconscious level. I'm not qualified in any way, but I have had this fact checked by neuroscientist Andrew Wright, aka the Neuro Ninja, and although he may have twitched a bit at some of my oversimplification, he has confirmed that nothing I have said is incorrect. So the first and most important thing I want to share is that fear is our baseline emotional response. When I found this out, it revolutionised my life. I come from a generation that was taught that fear is weakness, only wusses get frightened and no one wants to be a wuss. Don't be so silly, there's nothing to be afraid of. Stiff upper lip and all that stuff. But it's not true. Fear is what drives us at the most primitive level. And that makes perfect sense. In terms of a survival strategy, being hyper alert to potential danger is a great idea. So now here's the science. The amygdala is the bit of the brain that has been around for thousands of years doing the same thing, a bit like DJ Steve Wright in the afternoon. The amygdala's key role is to process all sensory information and make a risk analysis. Any change to the norm is red flagged and an instruction to trigger a fight, flight or freeze response is sent to the command centre, aka the free time, <coughs> easy for me to say, aka the prefrontal cortex or the PFC to its friends. The trouble is, the amygdala hasn't adjusted very well to 21st century life and finds everything terrifying. Imagine a caveman arriving in a pre-lockdown city and you've got some idea of how overwhelmed the poor amygdala gets. Luckily, the PFC knows where it's at and soothes the concerns of the amygdala. Their daily conversations would be something like this. Scary change! No, 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 it's fine, it's just a new app on my phone. And can basically be reduced to Scary. No, chill. Scary. Chill out. Scary. Chill. On a daily basis. Sometimes, however, the PFC can't conv convince the amygdala to chill because it's actually identified something genuinely scary. Like now. In a genuinely scary and potentially life-threatening situation, the PFC's job is to use rationality to modify the fight, flight or freeze response so that it is constructive and not destructive. Not always that easy. So, our amygdalas and PFCs have identified COVID-19 as a genuine threat to survival and have opted for one of the three Fs. In the rest of this first video, let's look at fight, the scrappy-do response. Virus threat, me use spear. No, you can't use a spear against a virus. We need to find another way to fight. Flint head axe. No, that won't work either. How about we fight the virus by following all the government guidelines to keep ourselves and others safe? Hmm, okay. Many people are fighting this way. Many are fighting more directly by volunteering or performing key worker roles and exposing themselves to increased risk. They are amazing and we cannot thank them enough. But I want to look specifically at what is happening in the brains of us on lockdown. How long can the PFC convince the amygdala that passive compliance is a sufficient flight response? I suspect that for a lot of people, that time has passed and the fight response is beginning to manifest as irritability, impatience and anger. Since there are not many opportunities for the amygdala to fulfil its wish to grab a spear and do battle with a saber-toothed tiger, the most common fight response we have is anger. And because so many of the things we are fighting are abstract, fear of failure, fear of looking stupid, fear of rejection, etc., the anger is rarely directed at the cause of the fear. How many of us have got angry during lockdown? How many of us have shouted at the virus? 
Instead, we get angry with the government, people who are not social distancing, idiots on social media who make annoying videos, and of course the people we are spending way more time with than usual, who are often the people we care about most. You're probably now waiting for me to hand you the magic wand that will stop this from happening. Sorry, I wish I could. But, as with all things related to the brain, it's not that easy. Cue anger at idiots on social media who make annoying videos. When I was first told that anger comes from fear, I was sceptical. But I was willing to test the hypothesis, and I found that when I calmed down after a burst of anger and thought about the cause, I actually could identify the underlying fear. My PFC could then explain to my amygdala that the fear was unfounded and the anger unnecessary or disproportionate. Sometimes the fear would be real and the anger justified, but I'd misdirected it. In both cases, I could then perform damage limitation and apologise to the bewildered recipient of my wrath. Alternatively, the PFC might conclude that the fear was real, but needed to be addressed in a more constructive way, talking it through or taking practical action. In other words, by understanding that fear caused anger, I was able to unpick that emotional response, repair any collateral damage and find a better way. If we don't recognise and moderate our fight responses to the fear of COVID-19, then they are in danger of escalating from anger to violence, and nobody wants that. The alternative is that we bite back the anger without dealing with it, force it down inside like a particularly stubborn jack-in-a-box, where it will sit in the pit of our stomachs and turn into depression. Depression always carries with it the potential for suicidal thoughts. And now, with many people much more isolated than usual, that potential is exacerbated. I've already heard that several young people locally have tragically taken their own lives. Although I don't have a magic wand to offer, I hope that by understanding what is happening with our emotions, we can manage our anger and avoid depression. Daily singing, laughing, some kind of enjoyable exercise and connecting socially by whatever means are available to you would be on my prescription if I were a doctor. We are all living with the fear of COVID-19 and are all feeling powerless. If this video helps even one person to manage the anger that I see brewing all around and inside me, then it has been worth doing. My next video will look at the other two Fs. And in the meantime, if you want some more science, check out Andrew Wright's YouTube um, thingy and um, I'll put some links on the actual post. Thank you for listening.